Hi, my name is Sharon Brassard, and I'm here at Romantic Designs Artist Studio in St. Thomas, Ontario, bringing you another video in our online series of art videos. Today's project is the art of quilling. Now, quilling has been done for many, many years, and it includes strips of paper that are rolled, shaped, and glued to create a decorative design, like this. Or like this. It's easy and very relaxing. And by the way, those two examples were done by our nine and 12 year old granddaughter. Intrigued? Let's get started. Here's what you're going to need. A white piece of cardstock, about seven or eight sheets of regular colored paper, a design, or you can draw your own design if you want, white glue, and a glue stick, something to put the glue into, toothpicks to apply the glue, scissors, eraser, and pencil. Now besides this, you're going to need a quilling tool. These are two different quilling tools, but in this video we're going to show you how to make your own quilling tool. The quilling tool should be made by an adult as you will be using a sharp blade. If you look at the quilling tool you will notice that the end is open and that is where we're going to be inserting our paper strips. For recreating this tool, we're going to take a regular wooden skewer and with a blade, we're going to make a cut in the middle very carefully. Then we take a piece of paper and place it in between the cuts. You might have to pry open the skewer slightly to insert this paper. slide it in and down, then cut off the ends. Remove the cut tabs and now your skewer will work just like a regular quilling tool. The next step is to trace your pattern onto your cardstock. In order to do this, turn your pattern over and with a pencil, I want you to scribble all over the back of that pattern. Cover it completely. Grab your cardstock, place your pattern in the center, take a little piece of tape, tape it on there so it doesn't move around, and then with either a sharp pencil or, I like using a pen, Start to trace your pattern. Once you have traced your whole design, flip the paper up and check to make sure everything has been drawn. Remove the tape and the paper. Next we're going to cut our strips of paper and I've laid a pencil and a skewer down beside this uh, strip so you can get an idea of the size. The width will be one eighth of an inch or three millimeters. And it's better if you cut these strips ahead of time rather than cutting them as you go. So I'm going to cut some pink strips here. Take your scissors. Start to cut. Now, don't worry if these strips aren't all exactly the same width. It doesn't really matter. As long as you keep them fairly thin. Let's take your time. If you have a cutting machine, that would even be better. But I'm trying to use tools that we all have at home. 
Now that I have a variety of colors cut in my paper, I'm going to start to quill. I have my pattern here. I have my glue, which I squeezed into a little dish, and I have my toothpicks here. I also have taken off the lid of my glue stick, and I have that beside me as well. I'm going to show you how to do a basic quill roll. Grab your quilling tool, a strip of paper, insert the paper in between the nose of the quilling tool. Bend it slightly and start to roll the quilling tool. You're rolling the strip on top of itself. I'm going to show you here. Keep rolling. To come to the end. Okay. See the little tab at the end here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the glue stick and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the end of this tab. But first, I'm going to remove it, slide it off. There's the little tab. I'm going to take my glue stick, a little bit of glue on the end. Then I'm going to roll it, just like that. And there's our first curl. Here are three quilling rolls. This one is a tight roll. These two are looser. You can do them tight or loose. A tight one you might want to use for an eye, whereas the looser ones you might want to use for a body. There are many shapes that you can make when you're doing quilling. These are just one. That's the roll. Now I'm going to show you another shape. I've got a roll on my skewer. I slide it off, loosen it a bit. The tab, I'm going to put some glue on the tab. I'm going to roll it back on. Back and forth just to make sure that it is attached. Then I'm going to squeeze one end. This is a tear. These tear shapes can be used as feathers, wings, or even a leaf. The next shape I'm going to show you is this diamond shape. Using the same technique as before, squeeze one end for a tear and squeeze another end for your diamond shape. This one, you just push in the center. There's another shape. And lastly, a star. All I'm doing with this one is squeezing all four sides. And for this one, you're going to need a loose roll. Using this bird as an example, if you look at the body, you'll see these are where I've used the round quilling rolls. Further down, where it comes to the tail and the feathers, that's where the tear-shaped ones have been used. And then over here, with the leaves, I've also used the tear shape ones. The eye is a very tight, tight roll. And the beak would be that uh, smiley shape that I did. I'm going to start off by doing my eye. So I've done a very, very tight black roll. I'm going to get some glue onto my toothpick and I'm going to dab a little bit and then I'm going to drop my eye like that. Leave it. Just like that. 
Now I think I'm going to put some, I want my hummingbird to be nice and colorful. So I'm just kind of looking at what colors I want to lay down there. And I think the pink is nice to start off with. So again, a little bit of glue on my toothpick. Lay that down and drop my little quill circle. A second one. Drop it. Now you can see how it's starting to take shape. Okay, I want you to take a look here. So this was a circle, but when I dropped my glue and then applied my roll, I pushed it in gently so that it didn't go over the outline of my bird. And this is the nice thing about the quilling is that you can actually make it shape. You can make the shape to however you want it. You can see by adding the light colored quilling rolls around the eye, the eye really pops. And my hummingbird um, nose here, I did in brown. I've added some more to the body. I'm gonna keep the wings maybe blue so they'll pop out, but you can see the gradual progression here. Whoopsie, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, just having too much fun. Like I said, this is very relaxing. You can see I've used the tear shapes for the wings, tear shapes for the wings, and I've used that squeezed on both ends uh, for the top of the wing. I haven't put that there yet. So I'm pretty much done my hummingbird here, but I'm going to add a little something something at the bottom. I like this little idea right here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Take your skewer, take your paper, insert it in between the two prongs just like we did before. Twist it. Leave a tail. Pull it out. There we go. I'm going to move it over here. And I just add it in. There we go. Now I've also done the same sort of thing to make some leaves and branches. And how I've done that, skewer, insert the paper, twist it until you get about halfway. Pull it out, go to the other side, insert the paper in and go in the opposite direction so that you're ending up with that. And that's how you could make a twisty little branch. Wasn't that fun? Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative.